Hey, welcome to season two of the Mass Business Podcast. My name is Matt Ward. I am your illustrious host. I am so happy that you've come back for season two. That means hopefully we did something right in season one. Hopefully you enjoyed all the content that we have for you around educating yourself, growing your business, networking and referrals. We're going to continue that conversation. Season two is all about knowing your strengths. So we're going to dig into that with all of our guests in this month. And we're going to start with David Verdon. David owns Verdon Benefits LLC, and he provides health insurance and other products that can help when injury or illness strikes. He hails from Danvers, Massachusetts, has been doing uh, with Verdon Benefits for five years now. I met David through networking, which is the best place to meet people. David lives, as I said, in Danvers, Mass, or hails from Danvers, Mass, has two kids who don't hate him yet, but they will soon because they're almost teenagers. And a small tidbit you didn't know about him, he loves to beatbox. That's right. Please join me in welcoming and meeting the beatboxing benefit guy. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Mass Business Podcast, where small business owners, also known as risk takers, share their stories about the growth of their business and themselves. Our interviews and our content is focused on growing a small business and understanding networking and referrals. I say it all the time, and I'll say it again today, you never know where your next referral will come from. All right, welcome to the show, the beatboxing benefit guy. <laughs> All right, now before we get into it, tell everybody what you do. Give us a sample of the beatbox. All right, let's lay it down very quickly. <laughs> and that's that, all I'm going to give you today. That's so Tickets good. Tickets sold at the door. And we'll do Tickets sold at the door. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I would love to go to a networking event. And just introduce you as the beatboxing benefits guy. You'd be so memorable. We might take this to the next level, Matt. You, I'm going to give you full credit for it, too. Dude, uh, I ha how yeah. long have I known you? I've known you for over a year now. And yeah. we have had lots of deep conversations about your business and the things you do and who you are. And today, today, I was today years old when I found out that you <laughs> are Awesome at beatboxing. That's so cool. Yeah, it's what it's basically a single, maybe maybe an additional one more beat than that. It's not all that impressive, but I'm nobody I'm cares. You're impressed. That's super <laughs> impressive, dude. What do you mean it's not impressive? Can you imagine what would happen if I tried that right now? Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. It, it would be a disaster. It would ruin it for everybody else. Okay, so in under thirty seconds or so, tell our listening audience on their favorite podcast platform or our viewers on YouTube exactly what you do at Verdon Benefits. All right. So very simply, I help protect paychecks and preserve lifestyles. How do I do that? I'm a benefits broker, health insurance and supplemental benefits. When injury or illness does strike, there's a lot of out-of-pocket money that needs to be spent. The products that I offer help keep people financially whole and prepare for those things because just let's face it, Murphy's Law says things are going to happen and let's be prepared for them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the structure of the model of business that you have is that you are the sole guy. You sell the business. Uh, you sell the insurance. You uh, do all the business development sales around it. And then you manage the client relationships. You don't necessarily issue insurance policies. That's obviously the back office stuff. Um but you're pretty much responsible for getting everything in the door. That's correct. You know, the the newer term that I learned in the last few years is solopreneur, and that's me. And yeah. um, as an independent broker, really everything is on me. And yes, I am appointed with various carriers when I write mm -hmm. the business, then they issue it, of course. But my main focus beyond the sale of a product is a very serious concentration on customer service of that client and being mm -hmm. there for them when they need me. So 
Without answering customer service as the answer, how do you stand out? I mean, insurance is a big deal. We do a lot of networking. I met you through networking. Um, there's a lot of other insurance people in networking. How does how does Verdon Benefits, how are you, David, actually able to stand out from everybody else? I mean, uh, as, as cliched as this may sound, uh, uh, I believe it's honesty and integrity. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, there is the there's the image of the insurance agent who will try to go into to a, a someplace, try to sell, upsell on every single product, leave with a maniacal laugh as they're walking out of the building and leave tire tracks and smoke as they leave the parking lot, never to be seen again. And that's that's not I mean, obviously, that's a cartoon, but that's mm -hmm. not me. You know, so my job is to work with folks where the integrity and honesty comes in is I will sit with someone in a consultative approach, find out what they truly need. I'm never going to take them down a path that, that isn't, doesn't make sense for them. And then on the flip side, down the road, when they need to, to actually make a claim or use their product, change anything on it, then I'm that one phone call away to be the, be that resource for them. And that's really how I build my business is, is that are those things that, you know, people really do appreciate and hopefully they tell their friends and uh, that's how it all works for me. So that honesty and integrity is obviously showing through um, trying to build trust on the networking side. How much is networking um, a part of your business? Well, for me, you know, networking, I don't know if I, if I can't say it's a hundred percent, but it's darn near close because I do a lot of it. I feel the, the relationships I can make through networking are much more valuable than much more valuable time spent than the much smaller percentage I do of cold calling or door knocking. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I very strategically choose networking avenues you know, the, the old adage, and you preach it, I know, my friend, is that to get to know, like, and trust somebody before mm -hmm. they want to work with you. I work on those relationships. Everybody, you know, it's the six degrees of separation. Everybody knows somebody. And, you know, when I make it known what I do, and I am also a, an asset to my partners in networking, I help them. Then for me, that's how I do it is it, it grows from there. And that's really where I focus. So you go to networking events, networking groups, and then you also do one-to-ones? I do all of it. So, I mean, the last 18 months has been a challenge. Uh, it's been a Zoom networking world, of course. Mm -hmm. But yes, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world not affected by pandemics, it is the various groups I physically attend. It's one-to-one -one meetings that generate from those meetings, from those groups. I, you know... Uh, LinkedIn is a phenomenal resource for me. Um, I meet I meet people uh, on LinkedIn all the time that generates one to one meetings and relationships. Um, so you know, really, every I'm doing everything you just described and maybe a little bit more. That's cool. What? How? How do you sustain it? I know that I've run into people all the time who talk about business growth as a whole and they talk about networking and referrals and then they get frustrated because they feel like it's a lot of work and not a lot of results. How do you push through that and sustain it? I, I totally understand that because that can be a, that's a real feeling. People, people who do uh, the, uh, uh, the amount of networking that I do and yet, I have a very serious, um, I don't know if it's a, a mantra by which I live, mm -hmm. that I am meeting people all the time. I try as best I can to, as quickly as I can, help them out when they tell me what's a good referral for them, what's, you know, you know who, who are the type of people you like to meet. Um, I try to, I try to, to you know, inter make introductions for them with a very real commitment to myself that I'm not going to be offended if it doesn't boomerang back to me immediately. Um, these things, these things take time. I'm a very patient man. Uh, I know I, you know, I, you could call it karma, you, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I believe in it. And I, I, and I've, and I've, in the five years that Verdon Benefits has been in existence, I've seen it come back. It, 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 it typically will at some point. I think I would just, if I were to give anyone advice, first of all, there is that gestation period of a year. I've heard. Some people I've heard just the other day, 18 months that you must 
commit to a group to, mm. to, gain, to gain the the no like and trust factor mm. that can be frustrating for some for some pe- people who aren't all that patient um but i can tell you that it for if you're consistent in it and you are and you are willing to give there's the there's the old givers gain from a certain networking group that uh, is out there and it but it but there's a real there's a realness to it you, you know you're gonna you're gonna give it's not gonna come back to you immediately likely uh but it's you know it will come around and mm-hmm. it really does work so you just have to be patient and continue at it right i mean it's absolutely uh, absolutely i mean i think there's a tendency I'll have I'll have a down day where I'm thinking to myself and only to myself, I've given that guy six referrals mm-hmm. in, the, in the last six months and not a single thing has come back to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll and then I'll maybe it's my old it's my elder years, Matthew, that mm-hmm. uh, maybe I'm just a more mellow individual at this juncture, but I'll v- eventually get a control of my brain and say, hey, it's it, it, don't worry about it. It'll come around. Yeah. You know, it. you bring it that. I, the thing I look that happens to me and I'm in this business and I, I, I work on that um, skill internally all the time. There's nothing wrong with thinking. What about me? Mm-hmm. What's wrong is acting on it. Exactly. That's the, that's the clear decision. The, that's the clear difference. Um, because when we act on it, we become desperate. And, you know, and, you'll, and and if you act on it, if you lash out, you're going to scuttle any mm-hmm. goodwill you've created. All your trust is gone. <laughs> All of it is gone. Right. I talk yeah. about putting deposits in the trust bank account over the years, small micro increments in, of trust. And then when you're taking the withdrawal, you're taking big withdrawals. Right. And so your bank account is going to be bankrupt very quickly if you do the wrong things with that. And and I think, again, there's nothing wrong with thinking, what about me? What about my turn? When are they going to ask me about me? When are they going to give a referral um, to me? When are they going to think of me? But the thing I always come back to is, look, the only reason people aren't getting referrals is because we haven't done a good enough job to ensure that our partners and referral sources know exactly what we do, the questions to ask, to bird dog the referrals, qualify the referrals to send them our way they just don't we're not in touch enough we don't we don't have enough touch points along the process to ensure that they're thinking of us more than anybody else right because they're giving referrals out to some degree or they're just not educated on how to do it well there's this is a networking is a learned skill i mean i can tell you let's just say uh, over five years ago and going back 20 something years, I was mm-hmm. a W2 guy working for various companies. I didn't know, I didn't even know the existence of networking groups. I didn't, mm-hmm. I, I didn't have to. Mm-hmm. And then I get into the business where I'm running my own shop. I'm a hundred percent commission. It's go out and, and, and make deals and find, find business or you don't eat. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, yeah, I joined uh, a networking group pretty, very, pretty quickly on the advisement of someone who knew better, who knew, who knew, and and I jumped in with both feet. And the beginning was rocky, I'm going to say. And then somewhere along the way, I, I met you, um, and you've mm-hmm. given me some amazing nuggets, and I'm appreciative of that for mm-hmm. sure. But that's the thing is, you got to, you have to be consistent. You need to be ears open and learning all mm-hmm. the time because the <laughs> the um, you know, there's a, there is a lot to learn the things that you were just saying, the little, the little, um, nuances of, of, of listening. And uh, I love, I love what you say about the hand. I'm a huge fan of the handwritten card. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of listening really intently and, and knowing, oh, that'd be a fun thing to send mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. Um, because, cause you, that's going to, that's going to be memorable. I've gotten, right. I've gotten recent feedback from folks to whom I sent a handwritten card, a lot of saying something like a handwritten card who does that anymore and it's just it, well it's my listen I, you you mentioned my kids in the intro they're 15 and 12 from from the day they have been able to write they write handwritten thank you notes at christmas time virtually yeah stuff. that because that's just the way my wife and i were raised and we're doing it um and but uh, david you know something you know how many families are having their kids do that but yet they themselves don't do that in business yeah, well, that, you're 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 probably absolutely right, and that just that just that, that seems insane to me. Um, 
You know why? Practice what you preach. They're too busy. Yeah, there, but there's no you. You'll say it that there's always yeah. a sliver of time to be able mm-hmm. to do that. I'll, I'm doing the. I'll, I'll do mine at night. You mm-hmm. know, you know, my my 15 year old stays up later than me now. But you know, the at I night, have a client like, that writes all his cards during uh, while he's watching basketball or baseball games. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll I'll sit in a and I'll sit and have a eat my lunch uh, with mm-hmm. one hand and be writing another. There's always time, and they really they don't need to be these long novel <sighs> uh, notes. They just they can be a few lines, and, you know, expressing thanks, you know, yeah. uh, and, and and whatever it might be. And I like to see three lines: the opening thank you type of thing for why you know what what happened, right? A callback line referencing something so if i was to do this hey thanks for coming on the podcast it was great to learn about your beatboxing can't wait to see you at an in-person event the third line is just to close and you sign it with a first name no business card right. no company information no right. phone number that tidbit about the no business card is a big one i like i mean i think um I'm pretty sure I got that from you. Yeah, because it turns it. It makes the card turn around from being about them to being about you. Exactly right. Yep. Such a good, yeah. Good, such a good so there. when we, I love, I love some of the things you're talking about and some of the golden nuggets you've learned over the years. Which brings me full circle to questions around season two about knowing your strengths. Um. What would you say some of your greatest strengths are? I mean, I think you probably mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's just sort of your character, we right? We touched on them. We touched yeah. On them when I talked about integrity and honesty, um, loyalty was a third one that I, yeah. that I think of that is valuable not only in business, but also in life and friendships. Um, and it's something that I, I I like to think that it was my father who who really you know, pushed, you know put it in me the the idea of being loyal um and just in that in a business sense you know you the, the clients with whom i work you know i'm i'm you know the, just today i saw or yesterday i saw something on one of the socials about someone seeking a landscaper in in nashua new hampshire and i've got a landscaping client in nashua mm-hmm. new hampshire and 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 i know they do good work so i feel very comfortable and then that's the most simple that's a very simple mm-hmm. example but of re- making sure i refer them um and I've got lifelong friends um, mm-hmm. go, going all the way back to grade school to, to whom I'm especially loyal. There isn't a, 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 you know, anything I wouldn't do to help them when they need it. And I think that that just it, it comes through, I think, to people over time as they get to know you, as you work with them is another. You know, a How did you discover that these were your strengths? Well, I've, I've gotten some, I mean, the folks I've known my entire life have, have, have flat out told me, you know, mm-hmm. the value and the friendship that, that we have and, and the, the acknowledgement of, of that I'm not going to ever let them fall down because they are my friend. Um, but I've gotten similar feedback in business in, in, in g- going that extra mile to help the client who, who, you know, a, a recent example without, you know, is, is uh, someone whom I was ha- helping with a cancer claim and he couldn't, he, his scanner was, he, first of all, wasn't all that mobile. And secondly, his scanner and, and, and mm-hmm. wasn't working at the house. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm coming over. I'll come over. I'll meet you in the driveway, you know, going that extra mile um, and being the, being what I promised to be. Like I lead, I lead with, I am a customer service focused insurance agent i am one phone call away at all times and i mean it i live by it and i always am i mean that's that's how and i i yeah, that's driven by me wanting to keep my business alive of course mm-hmm. but it's also it's also at the heart of who i am it's it's how i feel about treating people right treating people well and 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 doing what i promise that i'm going to do and uh, it all sort of wraps up into i think the the I believe the good qualities I have, the good qualities I use to run my business. Um, and and you know, that's how I, I choose to live my life. Mm-hmm. Do you ever sit still and meditate or think about you and your business and, and your strengths in your business, what you're really, really good at? If I'm being 100% honest, it's certainly not enough. 
Um, I think as, as business owners, we get going a hundred miles an hour and essentially I collapse into bed every night, exhausted, just thinking briefly, okay, I got to do this tomorrow. And, uh, but I think what you just described is, would, is a valuable exercise that I think I'll try to do. Um, and because I think that that self-examination is very important. It's going to help you dial in behaviors that are going to, you know, make you do your business better. Um, I, I don't do it enough, but I think I should be. <laughs> yeah. I think I asked the question because I probably don't do it enough. Right. And I wonder what, what ways, you know, I, I'm not an expert in knowing your strengths. What I know is that knowing your strengths helps you build a better business. I know that knowing my strengths will help me build a better business. And sometimes I feel like, Geez, you know, I'm running 85 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, like you were talking about. And I don't stop and think and, and sit and be still for a moment and just think about what I do great, right? Um, that's my strength, right? And is it managing people? Is it is it delegating a task? Is it outsourcing? Is it coming up with new ideas? I know I'm an idea guy and I do that really, really, really well. Um, but oftentimes, sometimes I give people ideas that they never asked for or wanted and now they're chasing off, you know, white, you know, shiny objects, right? So um, it, it's a challenge sometimes, I think, as small business owners to to continue to, to grow a business. I mean, you're you're five years in on your business, right? And what one thing do you know now that you wish you knew then? Oh man, that's a that's a fantastic question. Um, well, I mean, it's it's repeating some of the things we said before, but uh, but I going in when I first started in the biz, I had no idea, I had no idea um, what what you know, networking was, how important building those relationships was. Um, and certainly at, a, at the stage where I am now, I absolutely respect uh, the, those things and, and know, have learned how to cultivate those things. Um, I'm trying to think of a more, a, a more uh, exciting answer for you, but. Um, you know, so one of the things I wrote about in my new book, David, um, the high five effect, how to do business with people who bring you joy is that I believe that people left the corporate world and started their own business because they wanted three things, more money, more time, and more freedom. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Well, here's what I, what I, what I say with complete sincerity to a lot of people or anyone who will ask, I love three things about what I do. It's the more freedom, certainly, because I can make my own schedule. It's the, it's the control that I have over my own success when defined by earnings, because the more effort I do, the, the better I dial in my strategies, the, the more money I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. But three, legitimately for me, is my, ability, is my ability to help people when, when they are in some of, the, some of the most challenging times of their lives, whether it be a cancer diagnosis or, or what have you, um, a car accident uh, you know, with you know, where disability can kick in. It's it's just I I get a real charge out of being able to help people when they need it most. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you know because I see this all the time with small business owners is we don't know what we don't know, and so when we start our business we don't know like you said about the networking. We don't know. We think we're going to make more money. But we don't for the first five years, right? We struggle with that. We take on clients we shouldn't take on because we need more money. We don't get the time we thought we were going to have because time is the it's probably the number one thing people talk about on these podcast episodes. How they have a lack of time. We're running so we can't be still and think about our strengths, right? Because we don't have the time. And then the freedom, the freedom is an interesting thing, is that we have the freedom to do what we choose to do. But we often don't early on in our business because we're so married to the business in a way that in so many ways that is often unhealthy, right? And that's what it was yeah. like with my web agency for so long. 
So I got to the point where I was only working in it three days a week. Um, and I think that's a, that's a challenge. And what, what, what I'm hoping that this podcast will do for small business owners, especially season two, is really get them to dial in on their strengths and understand what their strengths are so that they can make better decisions moving forward, right? I've always firmly believed that with business owners, they often delay too long to make decisions. And if they make a decision quick, but they make the wrong decision, they can pivot. There's plenty of time to pivot. But if they delay in making the decision and it's the wrong decision, it's completely detrimental to the business and there's no time to pivot if they waited too long. And so knowing your strengths will help you understand how quickly you can make these decisions because you'll know what's in your wheelhouse versus what's not, you know? And I think that's, that's a, a, you know, a challenge, you know? Um, And I think, I think, you know, it's also not tangible. I know your strengths is intangible. I can't touch that. Right. It's not a check I receive in the mail. It's not a thing. And so it takes a lot of self-discovery, which is also very hard to do as a small business owner. Self-introspective look at ourselves, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, the time and lack thereof goes into a lot of that. The yeah. An hour goes into that. Yeah, because well, we have families, sure. right? We have kids, we have responsibilities, and it's, it's, it's always a challenge. What, um, when you think about business you use all types of tools in your business obviously you use tools for your industry but more specific you know staying away from the industry specific tools what one piece of software would you recommend that a business owner really get involved with and and is a game changer for them well i'll tell you it was a recommendation you gave me and it's been very very um very very helpful was the the HubSpot CRM? Oh, there you go. Yeah, and HubSpot. I, I've got some similar tools through the various uh, providers with whom I'm appointed, but mm-hmm. but then it gets fragmented and it's it's mm-hmm. kind of um, difficult to track. Whereas the the HubSpot gives uh, gives uh, gives me a central place to put things, be able to, mm-hmm. to find things easily, track track emails and so forth. That's very very helpful. <laughs> for if if you're in a job that requires you like, i'm licensed throughout new england and as you like to point out and beyond <laughs> the i so i do a lot of driving so if we're talking apps if you don't have ways get ways because that saves my life everywhere i go uh <laughs> mm. that's good do you do you listen to um podcasts and things like that when you're when you're driving in the car or walking or exercising or we're doing whatever I've got I've got the earbuds in m- most of the time. I mean, I use them for work and my phone calls. I use them for for I, I these days I go out and do about three mi- a three mile walk most mornings at a really ungodly early hour. And yeah, so I'm I've got a podcast, you know, either a business podcast or a, or a, I, I'm a huge comedy fan, so I I listen to a whole bunch of me- the comedians. Um, and so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an avid uh, podcast consumer for sure. That's really cool. Um, you, you read, do you read a lot? I, I should read more like right, right now. I'm, I'm, I feel lucky to be able to honestly say I am reading, um, uh, fly boys, the, that, that book about world war two flyers. Um, I, sh- I wish I read, I, I wish I read more consistently. Mm-hmm. But I'll go, I'll go in, in spurts and then for yeah. some reason, res- some reason, like take a little pause. For yeah. A while. And do you listen to audiobooks as well then? I no? haven't, I haven't done that as much. Um, I, I have listened to one or two uh, simply mm-hmm. because of with, with all the drive time I have, it made it easy. Right. Um, but but no, not consistently with, with the audio. So uh, if you were to recommend to the listening audience, whether it's on the podcast, their favorite podcast app, or viewing on YouTube, what one business book would you recommend that they take a look at? <laughs> uh, was there the Matt Ward? Uh, no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm trying Everybody to- throws that out there, and I'm honored and flattered. But what, what other book other than Matt Ward's book? Well, I'm trying to think of the most recent business book i've i've read 
and it's not but i've got podcasts um that i that i like um and i'm scrolling here you know there's the um have you read a game changer book at all not, not even like the most recent one but like early on in your business life yeah i absolutely did I, when i first started this i, I consumed a, a good number of them and um and I'm going to fail you right now by, <laughs> by trying to bring up some titles. Um, but, you know, I try to, there's a, you know, there's a building while flying podcast that I listen to, like the most recent building brands from scratch, you know, there, 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 there yeah. are those things that I'll, I'll consume, you know, audio versions of those things often. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I, like I said, it, along the lines of, I need to be reading more, as I need to get, I need to be more consistent on my on my business reads. Yeah, and then how do you? You mentioned that your your um your your strengths are really your you know some of your character stuff. Are you able to build those, or are there other strengths that you're working on building up into a um sort of um knowing that it's a strength you're you're working on a specific thing and you're trying to move it into a strength area is there something like that that, that you've been working on at all uh you know i i think in a general sense my um interpersonal relationship building um i'm always i like the i like the the group i like the group um networking events where mm -hmm. we go and we do the one minute commercials each and mm -hmm. open networking. I less, I'm less enthusiastic about say the chamber events that you go mm -hmm. to the big open cattle call and you need to, because they're call. less organized. Yeah. Less organized. And, uh, and, and I I'll do it, but you know, you walk around and you got to break into little clicks and try to introduce yourself. And, um, I'm getting, I want to be a little bit better at that, at that, um, open, less organized, uh, networking type of approach. Yeah. Um, is one thing, I mean, this, this isn't, this isn't what you're asking, but I keep telling myself with all my drive time, I need to be on Babel. I need to be learning Spanish. I mean, um, I need to, do that. I, need to well, do that. A, I mean, Hey, that you could turn that into a strength that would yeah. probably help your business greatly. Yeah, it, it would. It would. Cause I, I run into a lot of accounts uh, with Spanish speakers. And, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that I'm, that I've, I, I keep saying I need to do when I haven't. So I need to kick myself in the butt on mm -hmm. that one and do it. Well, do it on your three mile walk every day, right? <laughs> yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. I mean, you've already got what I call NAT, which is no added time, right? So you're just right. doing stuff at the same time you're doing something else. So, and that's a that's a good takeaway for the listeners. I, I know you heard that in season one as well, which is you like to do things that are no added time because time is such a precious commodity in our small business and frankly in our lives so you heard a lot from david verdon today verdon benefits it's it's um exciting to hear how he's grown over the five years and the things he's doing david if people want to network with you they want to get on a one-to-one -one call they want to invite you to a networking event or they want to just learn what verdon benefits is all about possibly even do some business with you how would they go ahead and get a hold of you i think the the most Easy way to do that would be at verdenbenefits.com. So spelling of Verdon is is on my profile right here. V I R D E N. Yep. He is in Victor I R D E N benefits.com. All one word, a plural benefits. Yeah. Uh, that's a place at which they can send me a message and learn more about uh, everything that I do. Cool. And we'll link to that in the show notes. Absolutely. And make sure that all David's contact information is out there for you guys to reach out to him. Uh, David, thank you so much for coming on uh, episode one of season two of the Mass Business Podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you very much for having me. For all you listeners out there on your favorite podcast app, please make sure you subscribe to the uh, podcast. We'd love to get you to subscribe and get notifications of the downloads. And for those of you over on YouTube watching these videos, we'd love for you to like, share, comment, engage with us in the social media and everywhere else and make sure you smash the subscribe button because we need subscribers on our channel that's it for today's episode i'm thankful that you took the time out of your precious day to listen to it or to watch it and until next time don't forget to live happy smile a lot and high five everyone around you This morning, gonna grab myself a smile.
Thank you for listening to the Mass Business Podcast, where we focus on growing a small business and understanding networking and referrals. Don't forget to like on your favorite platform and share out this podcast. This show has been produced by Heather Grant, music by Celtic Kelly, all rights reserved. I'm your host, professional speaker, author, and word of mouth referral consultant, Matt Ward. Don't forget to live happy, smile a lot, and high five everyone around you. Feeling all right.